The internet loves Tokyo. More specifically, the internet loves food in Tokyo. But somebody's got to see if these viral food spots are actually worth your time. So that's what we're doing today. If it sounds like I'm suspicious of these places, it's because I am. I've heard places that go viral can have the longest wait times, but this place I was fairly sure was going to be worth it. Cafe Reissue is a coffee shop that's gone super viral for its 3D latte art. And it seems like they'll draw just about anything you ask on there. Now, I didn't ask for a thirst trap of Gojo, but maybe that's the reason why the line of this place was so long. Even though we arrived 30 minutes early, we barely made it in. Now, of course, when you look at the menu, they have some pre-selected options that you can choose if you don't really know what you want. But we knew exactly what we wanted, and that was to make our own viral video here. So we left it up to the genius of these latte artists, who were kind enough to let us film and super welcoming. And boy, did they ever give us some serious material to work with. I went to one of the most viral viral coffee shops in Tokyo and asked them to make latte art that looks like me. And even though the artist thought I looked like Makima, the truth is I feel a bit more like, well, this. And as for the taste... Yeah. <laughs> now, this might have been the most expensive coffee I've ever had, but keep in mind Japan doesn't do tipping, even though these artists definitely deserve it. And though I maintain that coffee is kind of just glorified bean water, I gotta say, the talent going into these cups makes it worth being viral for me. And next up is Japanese department store Hell, where I found this gem. Talk about it, Tina. I lie. And so we began our ascent into the overwhelming capitalist hellscape known is Don Quixote. I am very overstimulated. And besides reflecting on the downfalls of our consumer society, I came here for a long-awaited cheese pull. A cheese pull in the shape of a 10 yen coin. But does novelty equal virality? Yeah, you can get a good Instagram picture with it, but does that mean it's worth waiting 30 minutes to an hour for? And can I, your shepherd of viral foods, recommend this in good faith on novelty alone? <laughs> Okay, I mean, they got me with the cheese pull, but it's pretty sweet. It does like, do a really good pull, which is rare for Japanese cheese. Japanese cheese is kind of not great. But at the end of the day, I simply can't give it my approval because I know you could get the same effect with a stick of mozzarella cheese and some pancake mix. But maybe the heat of Tokyo summer was just starting to get to me. And so is this voiceover, frankly. So I'm going to hand it over to Ben to describe the next spot. Oh boy. So this place was actually our first viral video ever. And who knew that an introverted ramen shop could be so controversial? But before I explain how Ichidan ramen works, I gotta let you in on a little billion IQ Japan summer hack, which is of course buying the cold vending machine bottles and putting them on your neck like ice packs. They don't call it the land of the rising sun for nothing. However, while we were filling out our orders in line, we actually noticed a little bit of suspicious activity happening across the street. Megan, what do you think a soap land is? Well, I, I didn't know, but now I they know. They just take a bath. They just take a bath. Yeah. <laughs> Get real a soapy. Fun, a fun Real bath. soapy. <laughs> yeah. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Ichidan ramen is pretty automated. In this case, that means going to the kiosk, giving your ticket to the worker, and waiting for your food. But what's different here is that they actually have little cards that you can give the worker to make sure that no one steals your spot, and more importantly, that people keep their mouths shut. The basic concept of Ichidan ramen is to create an environment where you don't have to talk to anybody. And anybody includes the staff. That's the reason they have the cards, so you don't even have to talk to them. Now, if I was talking at lunch and someone pulled one of these cards on me, I would personally be devastated. But yeah, for the most part, it makes for a pretty relaxed and smooth eating experience. So anyway, we went ahead and said itadakimasu and dug into our food. So people have some problems with Ichidan ramen. The first one was that our comment section did not like the fact that it was for introverts. But the good news for them is that there's a ton of loud ramen shops in Japan, so they'll have no problem finding those. Now, does it get the viral stamp of approval? I'm gonna say yes. Even though it's a chain and there are definitely better places, this place still slaps and it does hold some nostalgic value for us. So I'm giving it a yes. Next. Studio Ghibli lovers rejoice, we're getting some Totoro cream puffs. You know, for a guy whose art delivers such scathing critiques of capitalism and all that comes with it, his movies have been an absolute goldmine for merchandising. And I mean, look at him. You know, like a pack of sardine, you know, oh, we, we cannot, cannot escape, escape, we cannot, cannot come out. out. Mama! Just a little insider tip on this one, if you get your cream puffs to go, there's a much lower chance that you're gonna have to wait an hours long line for these. After all, Shirohige's Cream Puff Factory is pretty famous even with locals because it's owned by Miyazaki's sister-in-law. This is artistry. <laughs> this is beautiful. Also, I think we met her. Uh, I believe she was the person at the counter and she was 
so sweet and so nice. Like, I feel like if I had tourists coming into my shop every single day, you know, and just like lines and lines of people, I'd be over it. I'd be like, all right, get your cream puff and get out of here. But she seemed like she really was like quite flattered by yeah. everybody coming in. The selection of cream puffs depends on the day and the season. So no two days will be the same, but they'll definitely be accommodating if you want to try one of each. All right. Mm. I got chocolate. Mm. This is like a walnut or something. Mm, maybe maroon. Chestnut. Oh, the chocolate one is divine. Oh, those are really good. Yeah. I'm jealous. This one's good, but it's not my favorite. We're doing it. All right. Mm. Oh. Oh. Mine is like this custard. It's like really buttery. Uh, custard and this the uh, crust is so crust is crust. This one is definitely strawberry. For me, I gotta say, it's worth being viral. It's in a good neighborhood. It's in Shimokitazawa. You probably should get here early because I've heard mm. they sell out pretty early. And uh, if you want to eat in the cafe, that had a big line. Uh, but the cream puffs themselves were freaking fantastic. And after a breakfast of four massive cream puffs, there was nothing I could imagine wanting more than a steak that had been breaded and fried for lunch. But what will you do? What's viral is viral. And at this point, it felt like our God-given duty to figure out if it was worth it or not. And lo and behold, when we made it down to the restaurant, there was already a line, which was a good sign for the quality, but a bad sign given how rabid we were for food. <laughs> the vibes going into this one were already looking pretty good. So I am Confucian. They even had old meme references, or maybe we had the old meme references. Sorry, I never quite mentally progressed past 2016. Anyways, let's talk about the damn food, shall we? You get all the fun of cooking the steak to your liking, with the added bonus of nobody to blame but yourself when you inevitably burn it. But that didn't stop it from being a good quality steak with some even better dipping sauces to cover the scorched undertones. And for less than 2,000 yen for steak and a dessert in Tokyo, this place has got to get my stamp of approval. But then, of course we had to head to the mecca of Japanese viral videos. Japanese convenience stores are some of the first places places people go when they land and the last places people go when they leave. Now there aren't really any particularly viral videos just about Family Mart's Family Chicky, but this did seem like a pretty representative food of convenience store halls and those pull in real numbers. But we quickly realized we were missing a vital component to make a viral combination. The pancake buns. Speaking of which, these pancake buns were made possible by contributions from viewers like our one Patreon and two YouTube members. You really believed in us when no one else would. While Ben went off to get that, I decided to air my hot takes about Femi Chicky. It's just fried chicken, you know, and like a big slab of fried chicken with that. But with the pancakes... Ben, please show us how to, how to construct. Oh, wow. Okay. The oil, the butter, the maple comes together. It's pretty genius. Though genius as this may be, as it is a hack that I myself, amongst many others on TikTok, have endorsed, for the sake of your, and for that matter, my gastrointestinal health, I cannot in good faith give this a seal of approval. So let's bring it home with a final tally. You know, for the internet being filled with clickbait, I gotta say, four out of six foods being worthy of virality isn't so bad. But if you guys think we missed anything, please let us know down in the comments and like and subscribe. Hopefully we can make more of these kinds of videos for you guys in the future.